Good day, fellow investors. Today we have another uh, video featuring Yao Kai Yang. Hello, good day, investors. <laughs> Thank you, Yao Kai. And today we're going to talk about a very, very interesting uh, value investing, you would call it Grameen, Grameen stock that is trading at about $4.6, but has a value cash per share of uh, $4, $4 and book value of $10. And then we are going to dig into the stock, uh, Yaokai from a technical perspective, I more from a fundamental perspective. We're going to discuss some news and especially all those interested in learning about value investing will learn more about, okay, how am I approaching such a situation where normal, the book, the great, uh, the intelligent investor would tell me, okay, this is an investment with a margin of safety, a good investment, value is obviously there and how to apply that to a company. The company is uh, Amtec uh, ASYS and it's traded on the NASDAQ stock exchange. Uh, so let me just give you an overview of the fund and then we'll discuss a bit the fundamentals and then Yao Kai will talk about the technology and how to apply that technology on a margin perspective, on a business perspective and how that fits the cycle. So Amtec Systems, it's a solar stock. So again, something that a value investor would get excited because it's about a positive trend. It's uh, solar and that's expected to grow in the next decades. So this was a stock that I found when I was looking at the complete solar sector, more than 50 stocks back in May. And the interesting thing is that it has about 15 million shares and 58 million in cash. That's almost $4 per share. Add another 45 million in receivables and inventory. So that goes up to $6.86 per share in value. Total assets are 150 million. And then total liabilities are 45 million, which means that we get to a book value of $7 per share, of which almost four in cash. So what is Amtec Systems? It's involved in the business of supplying solar and semiconductor production and automation systems and related supplies for the manufacture of solar cells, semiconductors, and silicon wafers. And Yao Kai will translate my Chinese later. <laughs> so at the fundamentals, price earnings extremely low, price to book very low, but the forward consensus price earnings is now extremely high. There is no forward dividend yield and the market capitalization is 65 million as we are recording this and the year change maximum was $12 per share and now it's down to 4.60 but it was even lower to 4. If I give a quick overview of the revenues you can see them as extremely volatile 250 million when there was the solar boom in 2011 then down to just 35 million and then get again up to 165, 176 million in 2018. Uh, their uh, fiscal year ends September. So they just the last quarter was since the Chinese, let's say clamp down on solar growth. Gross margin also extremely volatile from 11 to 35% operating margin goes from positive to extremely negative to 33% negative, 54% negative, which is really extreme. And later Yaokai will talk about the cycle and how this cycle affects such companies. And obviously earnings per share are also extremely volatile. Number of shares has been increasing over the years and the book value has unfortunately been decreasing. Free cash flows cumulatively negative and the stock price is extremely volatile as you can see really the extreme volatility over the years as those solar short-term cycles evolve people get very excited expect who knows what from such a stock and then their expectations get destroyed and the stock hits constantly new lows almost even if the lows are slowly slowly growing so who knows, perhaps it's even an interesting uh, investment. So I'll give the word to Yao Kai if he can explain what is the company doing and how does that work in the 
solar cycle? How does it fit there? Yeah, so the company, according to their own uh, 10K, they basically produce a three, four things. So um, one is um, they make a, uh, they call it horizontal furnace, horizontal, let's see, horizontal diffusion furnaces. Sounds very fancy, but uh, this is actually a fairly, it's just a heater. So in, in human language, it's just a heater, except that you have to give it um, a, a very proper temperature control, uniform temperature, maintain that temperature. And um, the way you use it uh, is you have these disks of wafers. So that's silicon, pure silicon, and you stack it against some other thing, uh, potentially like uh, genamide oxide or some stuff like that we call dopants and then that changes the, the conductivity of the semiconductors. But this is only used for very, very old technology. So this is not something you would see that people use to manufacture um, CPUs. This stuff is used for 2000 nanometer uh, stuff, like 2000 nanometer um, processing nodes if you were to use it for transistors. And uh, nowadays, what we use is 10 nanometers. So there's only a 200 times um, difference in there. So you can't use that for uh, sem like the, what you normally associate as semiconductor manufacturing, like things with, to do with transistors. So this is, at the moment, can only basically be used for uh, MEMS. So these are potentially like these are small um, sensors or tiny uh, electronics made out of silicon or majority solar. So this company seems to be very tied towards solar. And then you have a continuous thermal processing system, another heater. Um, so actually it's more than just a heater. It's, <laughs> it's a solar machine. Um, but uh, that thing is used um, to do some of the packaging, essentially you have a dye which is made out of um, silicon and a bunch of other stuff. And then you have a substrate which is basically a, a, a thing you put the dye on. And in order to have these things fused together, have electric, electrical conduct, uh, like conductivity, you need some soldering material and you have to heat them up. And that's, that's your, uh, that. And that's not anything high tech because um, you will, like you see, it, it's a glorified, um, uh, one of those blower things that's, you know, the handheld, handheld heaters, like blow, that blows hot air to things. It, it, it's, it's one of those. And then you have a small batch vertical furnace, which is again, just a heater, um, <laughs> except now instead of horizontal, it's vertical and it's for smaller batches. It's for prototyping instead of making, um, you know, 100 to 200 uh, wafers at a time. Instead of doping 200 times, uh, 200 things, it's like a smaller thing. Okay, so let's say it's not so highly tech. So it's no, wasn't or, the, currently the, all the three of these are pretty low tech things. Um, and then you got the two things that are slightly more high tech is uh, chemical vapor decomposition is basically you have, you want, a uniform coating of certain chemicals on top of your silicon for whatever chemical for whatever effect that's slightly more advanced but again there are quite a few companies that are able to make this stuff and then the next thing is atomic layer decomposition similar stuff again it's you you're trying to deposit a layer of stuff on your uh, on your own things could be silicon could be glass could be anything okay. and the last automation products which is basically robotic arms which is again not high tech okay. so they have something that's slightly high tech even though that is even that is not you know like the things that people said oh like if you can make it um you you now control the industry like land research or something no it's mostly uh, pretty commoditized stuff. 
And as with all commoditized things, we know that when the market is good, you make money, but when the market is bad, you lose, loss, lose yes. a lot of money because it costs. And we have seen already, I have read through the conference call, they are firing people. So they will fire about 40 to 40 people. They have fired, I think, their CEO. So, oh, yes. <laughs> so the chairman will become the CEO. And also uh, they have had an impairment, which is about, I think it was 9 million. So there is 9 million loss over the quarter. And uh, also an explanation of where the money goes is uh, 9 million loss plus they are preparing to do an acquisition when they have an opportunity, which might be a good or a bad thing. But the key is you cannot count on your money to be delivered to you. There is a 4 million buyback and there will be another 4 million buyback. But we see if they, oh, make, yeah. an, if they make an acquisition, they might issue more stocks. And I think the CEO got 286,000 stocks as his severance pay. So that's their goal. Half a million dollars, I think, or something like that. Half a million dollars plus 280,000 stock options or something like that. Yeah. So that's, uh, again, 2 million. So there goes the buyback if, uh, if you calculate it like that. And so it's not really like a value stock that there is really value lying in, around with a margin of safety. And this low tech, as you were saying, really affects the margins and everything. But now that you are talking about this technology and we look at the we might we have to say there is a margin of safety these guys will probably not go bust mm -hmm. yeah there's all the cash it's hard to to go bust with all that cash so how would you trade this stock or uh, would you in invest this one in I, I i'm not too familiar with it's it's hard it's very hard to even trade it because it's so uh, tied up with china and then the chinese government would you basically have to keep wind of what the Chinese government's planning to do in terms of um, solar. Because in at one point, uh, they decided, oh, solar was a good thing. So they almost covered like, a, you know, one-tenth of the Gobi Desert with solar panels, right? So when you do that, obviously, you need the capacity. And once you need capacity, these, these, um, capa these are basically capacity providers, right? They, they, they give you the machines to do, do the things you need. Well, suddenly they their revenue explode, but the the the, the sword cuts both ways, and then the Chinese Chinese government in like seventeen or something, seventeen or eighteen, basically said, "Oh, we have too many solar panels," and the reason is they couldn't get the electricity to the place it needs to be at the time it needs to be because solar is is as you know is not on all the time, and. And all of a sudden, in like overnight, the capacity expansion stopped. And the funny thing is, um, it's just a tidbit that's very interesting. When the solar expansion stopped, the profitability of uh, Chinese solar manufacturers actually did not decline. Some of them actually improved, and then the stock price of all these guys went up since then. So. So something to keep in mind. So that's one thing I noticed. A growing industry, a growing commodity industry is not necessarily a good place to invest, especially if it's like growing really fast. There'll be more money chasing that growth than if it's a slow, slowly growing commodity business. Um, and once the, all the money goes in to chase it, CapEx goes crazy up and you can have a, margin destruction even when you have capacity like demand increase and crazy demand increases even so same thing goes to the dot-com bubble people were project projecting doubling of internet traffic every day every year it happened except your capacity went up like four times every year so everybody still got destroyed so if that's i think uh, i think this is actually a Chinese company because the chairman and the owner is Chin Chinese. The oh, they're Chinese. Now. Okay. But they have had a plant in uh, the Netherlands, Netherlands and they yeah. have their headquarters in America. So yeah. it's, okay. it's like a company that is Chinese but pretends not to be Chinese. Not to be Chinese. And they had the Dutch CEO 
and uh, so it looked a little bit different but we will see how that uh, evolves so in any case a very very interesting story about a stock with low technology but good fundamentals that has an extremely volatile stock price extremely volatile performance so you never know what you can expect there and except for the buybacks i didn't see any dividends over the last 10 years so we we can doubt whether they are just there for the management and for the owners or also for shareholders so a long long process of going nowhere when we look at the long term stock chart so that was it for me anything to add to conclude yao kai uh, no it's it's one of the things that looks on the surface very attractive but uh, when you look into it it's not there isn't really like a moat and so um yeah and and if it's a cyclical stock then you need to be able to time the bottoms and how do you know the bottoms i, I don't know how to time the bottoms <laughs> <laughs> all right and uh, then uh, let's give uh, an appetizer for a video i think will be coming out saturday this one will come out on wednesday and on saturday we'll talk about the stock that i've been covering for the last six months, Yaokai has been buying as the stock price really dipped, which is Beijing Capital Airport. And we hope that will be a much more, also an educational story, but a much more interesting and attractive as it is, I think also a good company and it will deliver good returns over the long term. So thank you, Yaokai. Thank you. And uh, we'll see all of us again uh, on Saturday when we discuss Beijing Capital Airport. <laughs>